Matthew's account of the birth of Jesus, he says that his mother Mary was still a virgin and that this fulfilled a prophecy found in the Old Testament book of Isaiah. When you look at this prophecy in context, at first it doesn't seem to be about the promised Messiah. We said last time that it's part of a longer section of Isaiah, chapter 7 to 9, which does speak very clearly about the Messiah. But are we claiming too much for Matthew here? Just a couple of pages later in Matthew's Gospel, in chapter 4, he talks about the start of Jesus' public teaching, and he quotes again from this longer chunk of Isaiah, this time from the beginning of chapter 9. Here's what he says. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he left Judea and returned to Galilee. He moved to Capernaum, beside the Sea of Galilee, in the region of Sebulum and Naphtali. This fulfilled what God said through the prophet Isaiah. In the land of Zebulun and of Naphtali, beside the sea, beyond the Jordan River, in Galilee where so many Gentiles live, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who lived in the land where death cast its shadow, a light has shined. So Matthew links Jesus' teaching and healing in Galilee with the same prophecy from the book of Isaiah. The section that he quotes from Isaiah chapter 9 goes on to say this. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. So when Matthew quotes that verse from Isaiah chapter 7 about a virgin having a child, he has in mind this longer passage of Isaiah, including the verses in chapter 9, which talk about the amazing child who will be born. When we put the original short quotation in this wider context, we can see that Matthew certainly wasn't misusing it when he applied it to Jesus. Once again, we see that if we want to understand the accounts of Jesus' birth, we have to look at them through the lens of the Old Testament and the belief that God had spoken and acted in history. If you'd like to think more about this, why not read Matthew's account of Jesus' birth? There's a link in the text with this video.